Hi, it's Jen and Tammy back with the Wooly Mug Mat Series. And Tammy, it's now November. <laughs> I know. This year is absolutely blazing by. Flying. I know. It I, seems like the older I get, the faster time it goes. goes. I think that's true. If you can relate to that, would you leave a comment? <laughs> yeah. so I know I'm not by myself on this. Absolutely. When I was a kid, time went forever. It did. It took forever. Especially when I was in summer. School. And, yeah. It's like that clock yeah. is broke. Yeah. And now I'm like, slow down. <laughs> so we hope you're having a good time with this series we're certainly having a fun designing each month and i know tammy you get your playground of your beautiful threads oh, yeah. and you it's decide great. what you want to teach um, we started this series way back in march if you're brand new to wool applique and maybe brand new to hand embroidery be sure to go mm -hmm. back to that very first video in our series where we go into great detail Absolutely. about how to use everything you're seeing here so that you're able to really come up with the same results mm -hmm. We started off last year with the Wooly Mug Rug Mug. Series. That's the song. And that, two, little, two little of these uh, so were, were in the kit. And that was a lot of fun. And we decided for this series we wanted to have a bigger shape where you could put your mug here and your appliques off to the side. This kit's available. And as I can see, I see a lot of hand dyes. There's in this. a lot of hand dyes. I think actually that, yeah. everything is hand dyed. I believe it is, yes. Almost Except every the black. Yes, yeah. it's all hand dyed. So just incredible wool is in these kits. And of course, you've picked some beautiful thread that it, I know everyone's anxious to hear you talk about that. Um, if you're just now seeing our videos, you're not familiar with the series, as every project we do that has applique, there's a free download. You can click on the very bottom of our homepage, free downloads. You're looking for the Wooly Mug Mat for November. Just grab them all while you're there. Absolutely. They won't be there forever. So That's go true. ahead and grab those before they're not there someday. Um, you'll have two pages. One's a layout diagram and one is a tracing diagram. Mm -hmm. And the tracing diagram is reversed for fusible applique because we like to use a fusible webbing on the back. P pieces are down and not moving while That's Tammy's right. doing all her amazing stitching, That's especially right. if you're going to be sewing that down by machine. Correct. You don't yeah, want you your pieces want them moving. Down. Yeah, you want them down. And that's where we use the heat and bond light. You'll be using a permanent pen. Don't use your friction pen to trace <laughs> that. I've done that and felt really blonde yeah. when I ironed that down to my wool. And of course, the heat made the writing the go writing away. Just fear, yeah. That was embarrassing. Anyway, you'll be using a regular pen, tracing around your shapes, roughly cutting around, and ironing those to the pieces of wool yes. that they belong to, cutting out precisely on the line. And you kind of have all your shapes ready to go. That's when we like to use our light box our applique pressing sheet. This is the wafer one. It's a perfect size for this project. I love this this is the box. fusa mat. This is new. We start our series off with the Fonz and Porter applique yeah. pressing sheet, which is great with cotton. It's it's not as 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 much of a performer as this is with wool. With the wool, the fusa mat, it just releases. It's amazing. It's yeah. incredible. Huge difference. And with things like this, you can go ahead and pre-assemble your acorn. And you can pre-assemble this pumpkin and pre-assemble that pumpkin in sections. So you're moving mm -hmm. things to the background in bigger chunks. Yes. I think it helps yes. keep everything where it's supposed to be versus trying to move things one by one. Yep. And that's what the, the mat and the light box does for you in conjunction with the layout diagram. Mm -hmm. and that's why we have a layout diagram. Consequently, you know, in my early quilting years when I was first jumping into applique, I found that a lot of patterns have reverse refusable applique, mm -hmm. but a lot of patterns do not have a layout diagram. And I was literally trying to look at the picture. Yes, refer to the picture for your diagram so yeah, to lay it out. We know yeah. that having a layout diagram makes the process of pre-assembling sections possible. Yeah, so those nice. are the types of things that you get for not only free patterns, but of course, all of our paid all patterns our have that as well. We really have your best interest at heart <laughs> when we're putting patterns together. Um, the products that we're using, of course, Heat and Bond Light or a fusible applique product that you like, maybe Steam a Seam or mm -hmm. something else like that. Yep. For Absolutely. our black, Tammy, you've always said you really don't want fusible on the back. It makes it too stiff to stitch through. Yes. So I prefer that freezer paper works amazing. It does. And this is one layer of the cut right heavy duty freezer yep. paper. I, I like started it. off buying the store bought freezer paper, which is really thin because it's 
and for me for wrapping me right yeah. yeah it's not meant for crafting no it is and not. this is beautiful you can just iron that down to your shape it just lifts up after mm -hmm. you've cut your first oval out uh, iron that down to another piece of black wool cut your yeah. second oval out and you can just keep reusing this over and over again because it just lifts away. So um, as, like I said, if this is all, we're trying to fast forward as much <laughs> as we can to get to your stitching, get to Tammy's <laughs> stitching. Um, if this is completely foreign to you, be sure to go back Absolutely. to the Wooly Mug Mat March. That video was like almost 45 minutes long where we go into depth about Great how detail. to do that pre-assembling in conjunction with all these products getting everything down to the background as you've done. Correct. That's Correct. when the difference comes in. We start the playing. The specialty stitches yes. that you have, yep. the very unique thread sets that you have. I see yep. something new on this table. I know, that's I saw it last fun. month too. <laughs> I know. Yeah, this is, I'm enjoying that because I have <laughs> I been that. doing actually a lot of hand embroidery at home yes. for some other upcoming projects. And just transporting the needles back and forth. Back and forth. It's so much safer. Use them. I know. This is the ultimate keeper. Oh. And this is, it's got a brass fitting. I love this it. This is really nice. It's real wood. Yes. It's beautiful. It keeps your needles right in here. Keeps them safe, secure. I can throw this in a project. I can throw this in my purse. I know this is just beautiful. It it's is. It's a good thing. This would make a great gift, Miss Jen. And it's... <laughs> <laughs> hint, hint. I think I heard... It, next month is December, right? It is December. It's almost Christmas. So is it going to stocking? I, I hear you. <laughs> good deal. Okay. I get one. Okay. Okay. So tell us, now that we got everything down to the background, I see a lot of thread over here. Mm -hmm. What's next, Miss Tammy? All right. So we've already got our appliques. We have stitched these down. We did whip stitch these. You can also use the silky threads to machine stitch them. That's what we like about the silky 12 weight mm. cotton machine or hand use. So once we have that done, I'm Beautiful. back. All right, we are ready to begin our embroidery stitches. And I like to start with the arc. So I'm going to take a little ruler. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark a start and a stop point because I like to have them start and stop fairly evenly. So I'm gonna mark a start, and I'm gonna make a, a stop, just like that. And people could really do as little or as much as oh, they want, yeah, right? Absolutely, you can do whatever you, whatever you like. I kept this stitch about a half an inch away from my edge. Okay. And I just used my ruler and just kept going around, just like this, move my ruler, Half an inch, half an inch. Now I know Casey does this sometimes and he showed me to use dots and he just oh, dotted it yeah. and then you just connect the dots. Okay. Either way works. Sure. This, uh, it all works the same as long as we get that line on there and a lot of times I just freehand it. Okay. Because you can kind of see where you your can. line is going. You can keep right? the equidistance. Yeah. And I see the reason to exactly. keep away from the edges. You're going to, in the end, stitch these together yes. with, a, with a blanket, a blanket st stitch. Yeah. So Kay. I wanted to give it a little bit of leeway. So Kay. that's why I came away from that one a little bit. All right. So the stitches I chose for November is called a wheat ear stitch. I thought it was appropriate. Uh, I love that. Harvest time. Yep, yeah. harvest time. And I'm going to use um, a variegated thread. Oh, so, how fun. I yes. think I see the one right yes, here. Yes, it is. That is it right there. And for the other stitches, those are more stitches we've done before. They're just, yeah, they're just basic stitches. Okay. Yeah. We did a stem stitch for the twirling vine, a back stitch for the leaves. Okay. They're basic stitches, but we do refer to them and we do tell you what page to look in the book if you need to refresh your a refresher course. I on often how to do, do that. if I haven't done a stitch. Do you know too. why I, I have to go back if it's, it's not one nice of my regulars? It's nice to just kind of glance at it and go, oh yeah, I remember yep. how to do that. Okay, yeah. so today the new one is today, the wheat ear stitch. The wheat ear stitch. All right, yes. let's we're see. We're going to show you that. Kay. All right. So to begin this stitch, we're going to come up right here between the two, between my line and the edge of my fabric. So I'm about in the middle, and I'm going to dive back to my center, right on my line, and I'm going to come back up again, straight across from, let me get my needle maneuvered here, there we go, 
Okay, so I am, I came up here, I went down on my line, and I'm coming up again straight across from this stitch. So let's see what that looks like when I pull it through. Yep, makes a little V right there, you see that? Now we're gonna go down, and now I'm gonna dive back to my, I'm pulling this back to my line, down a quarter of an inch, we're gonna pull it through, so now I have a little V stitch. I'm gonna take the back of my needle, and I'm gonna run it around, underneath my little arms and my stitch there, come around, and back in. Normally, I work a stitch where I sew away from myself. This one, I'm gonna work, I keep bringing that needle to myself, which is different. Usually, I don't work stitches like that, but on this one, I found it easier to keep that needle and just keep bringing it towards myself. For some reason, that just seemed to work better. Let's do another one. So we put in a line. I'm gonna put in another one. I'm gonna dive down a quarter of an inch, like this. And then I'm gonna take the back of my needle and run it around through all those loops, just like that. And then I'm gonna start again with the point right here, back up. And it just chains all those stitches right together, just like that. And the variegation will come in fairly quickly. I like this Eleganza thread. It does change color fairly rapidly. And it's also not um, expected. You don't know when it's going to change color. That's cool. So now I have the yellow there and go through, just like that, okay? You just keep on going all the way to the end. To end the stitch, I would just come in here, just take your needle to the back, and you're done, and you're finished with your stitch. All right, so now, as soon as I get my weed ear stitch all the way around, okay. I would then embellish the rest, and I just used a friction pen to make my lines on my leaves, and I just drew right on there. And that's where you can follow the pattern or just you do your own. Absolutely, yeah, do whatever you like. Make your little arms out there. Whatever you guys like is good. I love this, I love the friction pen. The other pen I love is the Mark Be Gone. This one marks white. So on this one is the one we use to do the curly cues yep. on the pumpkins. And there's, it's, unless you guys out there watching know of a way to transfer this onto here, man, that's the I next invention I'm looking that for. That is the next invention, definitely, yeah. And there's some tracing there's paper. tracing it's, paper, and you can mark it with dots yeah. and do it, but there's a lot of work to it. I just figure pumpkins just do in it. nature just grow, right? Just draw No it. stems are alike. So no so, worries. Yeah, just come in and go. Just make your little curly cues. Yep. And you can either tap on them a little bit, or they do dry. They do just appear. Mm -hmm. they That's do. so cool. They kind of appear. And those stitches look like you've got a back stitch planned. Yes. The buttonhole stitch around the edge. The finished. And then the stem stitch is what you're doing yes. those with. Right here with this pretty green variegated thread. I thought that I just thought gave that it was a so nice pretty. shine to it. Yeah. So once all like of the embroidery is done in total, yep. That's when I know you love to steam everything. Yes. Because all the lines are going away at yep. this point. All the friction lines, Kay. all my white lines go away when you it's steam. It's one it. of my favorite parts. I know you love to steam. I'll let yeah. you steam. Yeah. <laughs> I'll let you steam. While she does that, the other thing, if you have thread that is misbehaving, it starts to get tangled, it twists. Try some of this thread magic on this. I love this stuff for this dazzle thread and the razzle. Even if you're having trouble just with regular variegated thread, oh, I would yeah. use the thread magic. It's gonna just settle it right down and make it do what you want it to it do. It does, and I struggle with just threading the needle. Oh, threading needles, Especially if I can't find my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I love this needle threader. Well, you wouldn't need your glasses with this, Jen. Don't make me do this on camera. I do not have black <laughs> glasses with me today. I know you don't. I know, but you can see the giant hole to put your thread in. Okay, right? yes. Even I, I mean, it's, that's a big target right there, right? 
you can hit that target. That's not a problem. That's true. Get that thread in there. It, that is true. And it's right through. Boom. Yeah. That it's just right makes because what sometimes when I get toward the end of my thread and my needle slips off, I'm like, uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> now I'm in trouble. <laughs> That's right. That makes it no problem. That's so let's true. just look. I love how the wool pressing mat, oh. that things don't get flattened. Yeah, it does That's why we want stitches. to work with wool, and that's, that's why right. we do the embroidery, is that we want it lifted and dimensional, and like yeah. embossed. Yeah. And yeah. it's for some reason the give of the mat, but yet the firmness of the mat. Yeah, it's perfect. I don't know how it does pressing. it. It's I don't know, it's perfect. It's, it's perfect. one of those awesome things, yeah. <laughs> I know this extra piece we cut off are cut out, Tammy. Yes. Just That's to be able to backing. cover that up on yeah. the back. Yeah. And then we just, just lay that place on, there. on there. Yeah. Right? I just use some wonder clips to hang on to this. I don't need I don't like pins when I'm sewing embroideries because your pin is going to get catch on your thread. It does it's get going caught. Through. It gets caught. And it's the wonder clips catch it occasionally, but they don't snag my thread. Oh. They just loop around it. And you're like, yeah, I know. Just get off of there and you keep going. Okay. Right? And the definitely whip stitch safer. that from the front, mm -hmm. not the back, so you can Correct. make sure you're avoiding yes, any you're of your Yes, stay away from your appliques. Yeah. Once there again, a complex stitch broken down is doable. It is There's doable. Step, step, not only your excellent instruction, but in the book is oh, color step-by-step yeah. -step instructions yes. again. Yes. So that's the beautiful part about the book. I because sometimes if you're traveling, you might not have access to video. To a video. That's and right. it's a great resource to have, because yeah. I know when I'm on car trips, you know, I'm I not at my computer. Stitching. Absolutely. So Tammy, I cannot believe that we we're going to next be talking about the Wooly Mug Mat for Christmas. December. It's going to be here quick. I can't even oh, see, no. wait to see what, <laughs> there's a potpourri of possibilities oh, of what that's going to look really like. Really cute. So join the conversation, leave us a comment. We I hope you're enjoying the series and we will see you for the Wooly Mug Mat for December.